let's take a look at some negative exponents. We're going to simplify these expressions by writing them with no negative exponents. Let's look at our first expression. Here we have w to the negative fifth. Now, if you'll remember, by definition, if we want to eliminate our negative exponent, all we have to do is take it and rewrite it in the denominator. By moving it from the numerator to the denominator, it changes the sign of the exponent. Pretty simple, don't you think? Let's try our next one. 4 to the negative 3. Again, if we want to write this without a negative exponent, all we have to do is take the expression and put it in the denominator. So this becomes 1 over 4 to the third power. So notice, once this 4 to the negative 3 goes to the denominator, the 3 becomes a positive 3, and that's by definition. Now we could take this one just a bit further by simplifying. 4 to the third is 4 times 4, which is 16, times 4, which is 64. So we can really write this one as 1 over 64. So 4 to the negative 3 is just a fancy way of saying 1 over 64. Let's look at our last one over here. We have x to the negative 6th, y to the 4th, all over z to the negative 2. Now, we have two negative exponents, this one here and this one down here. This y to the 4th, notice, has a positive exponent, so it's okay as is. So we'll leave it there in our numerator, y to the 4th. What we have to do is do something with the x to the negative 6 and z to the negative 2. As we saw in our previous example, when we have a negative exponent in our numerator, all we have to do is take the expression and move it down to our denominator, and that makes our exponent positive. So that gives us x to the sixth in the denominator. Now, what do you think about this, z to the negative 2? Well, since the exponent is negative in the denominator, to make the exponent positive, guess what we do? We take the entire expression, z to the negative 2, and put it in the numerator. Once we do that, that gives us a positive exponent. So basically, all you have to do to make your exponents positive when they're negative to begin with, if it's in the numerator, take it to the denominator. If it's in the denominator, just take it up to the numerator. When you do that, you'll have all positive exponents. Let's look at our next example involving negative exponents. Here we're going to simplify and write with no negative exponents. Let's look at the problem. We have y to the negative 3 times z to the negative 4 all over y to the second z to the negative 6. Now, remember that we can only combine the exponents if the bases are the same. So we're going to have to work with the y's together for the first part of our problem. Then we'll deal with the z's separately. We'll start with the y's. Remember I told you the rule, the big guy wins? Well, here's the bigger one. Between negative 3 and positive 2, positive 2 happens to be bigger. Now let's think about the negative exponents. If negative 3 has to come down to the denominator, it's going to change sign. It's negative upstairs, so it becomes positive 3 downstairs. So what we get here is y, and let's do the arithmetic off to the side. We're going to have 2, which is already down here, and when the 3 comes down, plus 3, for a total of 5. So in other words, this y goes to the fifth power. Let's look at the z's and do the same thing. Now this might be a little trickier since both of these are negative. Now think about it. Which number is larger? Negative 4 or negative 6? Don't be fooled. Negative 4 is larger. Remember the number to the right on the number line is the larger number. So we know that negative 4 is to the right of negative 6 on our number line, so it makes it larger. Now what happens is the negative 6, 6 has to go upstairs to the numerator. Since it's negative downstairs, when we move it up to the numerator, it becomes positive 6. So what do we have? We've got the negative 4 that we started with, when the 6 comes up, it becomes a positive 6. So we have negative 4 plus 6, or 
positive 2. So notice we went upstairs with this one. So the z's end up in the numerator, and it's to the second power. Let me just do that one more time, because I know it's a little confusing when both of these are negative. Again, we identify the larger of the two. Negative 4 is larger. Because it's larger, the negative 6 must go up to where the negative 4 is. When negative 6 moves up to the numerator, it becomes positive 6. Remember the rules on negative exponents. So we have the negative 4 that we started with, and then we're going to make this a positive 6, negative 4 plus positive 6 for 2. So here we have our simplified expression, z to the second over y to the fifth. Let's take a look now at scientific notation. We're going to write these two numbers here in scientific notation. Here we have 4,786,000. To write this number in scientific notation, the first thing we have to do is take the digits 4, 7, 8, 6, and by using a decimal point, make it into a number between 1 and 10. That's easily done. We put it between the 4 and 7. So that gives us 4.786 times 10. Now to what power do we need? Well, here's the decimal point on 4.786. What we really want is 4,786,000. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We move six places to the right on this 4.786, so our exponent is 6. 4,786,000 in scientific notation is 4.786 times 10 to the 6th power. Let's try another one. Here we have 0 0.000052. We want to write this number in scientific notation. In order to do that, we first start by looking at the digits, 5 and 2. By placing a decimal point, we would like to make this number into some number between 1 and 10. That's easily done. We'll put it here between the two numbers, 5.2. So in scientific notation, we'll have 5.2 times and now this time, notice we have to move the decimal point in the other direction. Two, three, four, five places. Notice it's moving to the left. So it's 5.2 times 10 to the negative 6 instead of positive 6. Again, the difference between these two numbers is this first one is going from a larger number. 4.786 is smaller. Therefore, we have to multiply by this positive exponent. Over here, the number is smaller, uh, 0 0.00052. We made it into a number that's much larger, 5.2. So that's why we have to multiply by a number to the negative exponent, because we move the decimal point in the other direction. Now let's see how scientific notation will help us simplify problems such as this here. In this problem, we want to multiply 56,000 times 1 trillion 400 million. Lots of zeros there. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take each of our individual numbers and rewrite them in scientific notation as we did in the previous part. So here we go. Again, we look at the digits 5, 6. We make it into a number between 1 and 10 by adding that decimal point between 5 and 6. 5.6 times 10. Now, how many decimal places did we move? One, two, three, four. So that gives us 5.6 times 10 to the fourth. Notice we're moving to the right on our decimal, so that's why this number here is positive. Times, we're going to do the same thing with our 1 trillion 400 million. Take the digits, 1 and 4, make them into a number between 1 and 10 by adding that decimal point. There we go. So now we have 1.4 times, now how many decimal places did we move it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
So it's 1.4 times 10 to the ninth power. So far so good? We're almost there. Now remember that multiplication is commutative, which means that we can multiply in any order that we choose. Remember, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change the order of these numbers. In fact, we're going to just have these two numbers switch places. So when we do, within the parentheses, that gives me 5.6 times, and I'm just flip-flopping these two numbers here, times 1.4. In my second parentheses, I now have 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 9th. So far, so good. Now, as you can see, what I've done is created a much easier problem to calculate. All I have to do now is multiply 5.6 times 1.4. Now that happens to be 7.84, so we'll write that down, times, so this 5.6 times 1.4 became 7.84. Now look at over in our second set of parentheses. Do you recognize the rules of exponents? I've got 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 9th, since those bases are the same, all I have to do is add those exponents. 4 plus 9 is 13, so that leaves my base of 10 raised to the 13th power. Now if we start, in, when we start using our scientific notation, let's leave our answer in this nice scientific notation because 7.84 times 10 to the 13th really means that we would have to move the decimal point 13 places to the right which is a lot of zeros. So that's why scientific notation is nice notation, it's nice and compact, keeps our numbers very small. Now remember, when you're working with scientific notation, the key is to make sure you take the digits, make them into a number between 1 and 10 by adding a decimal point. Do that, and if you move the decimal point to the right, that gives us a positive exponent here. If you're moving the decimal point to the left, that gives you a negative. So have fun with your scientific notation. It will help you to calculate these very, very difficult looking problems.